This is a design my sister made for me. It's a salmon and a sun. That's my family design that she gave me. This one is a whale. I don't know if you can see it, that's a whale. And my sister did that design. And this one is a king salmon. And this is a freshwater. Mostly, most of the tattoos, uh, coastal designs, have a hook on the nose. When a salmon gets a hook on the nose, it means it's in the river. Fishing has always been a part of me. And this Illinois River is really, really important to our way of life and our traditions. The Elwha River is our livelihood. We have a lot of ties and um, connections in our bloodstream uh, to that aspect of it. It was a very important spot and a very rich in resources. But when the dams came in and the fish were, that's when the decline, in my opinion, started the decline in the salmon populations. It cut them off from their home. They had no home to go to. They're bumping against the dams, wanting to get by, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't give up. They'd stay there and die. So we lost a lot of salmon. Oh, that was a glorious day. I have a piece of it at home. <laughs> It's in my China hutch, and I take great pride in being the first major dam to come down, and, and I had a part in that. My tribe had, had the biggest part in that, so I'm real proud of that. It was uh, very emotional, very uplifting um, on that part of it, but very gratified and very humbled uh, to be standing where I was at that time. And when you say the Elwha people are strong, you're damn right they're strong. <laughs> but the process to get there took over a hundred years and almost took all our salmon, all five species. So that's when the work begins. These log jams, some of them were made by our tribe, but they're important for the river to slow it down so fish will have a place to hide and to rest. There's been plans for everything from dam removal to sediment management to revegetation of the former reservoirs to the hatcheries and how the hatcheries are going to be used. This hatchery was built specifically for recovering the native Elwha stocks of salmon and steelhead. The way a hatchery works is we take adult salmon and or steelhead, we take the eggs and milk from those, we fertilize the eggs, we incubate the eggs, we rear them until those fish are ready to go to the ocean, and then we allow them to leave to go to the ocean. We need to have hatcheries in situations where we either don't have the natural production or where we have habitats and where we can recolonize those habitats. As a scientist, it's kind of hard for me to just broad brush and say every hatchery is bad or good. I think every hatchery has to be evaluated on its merits. If you put a lot of hatchery fish into the environment, there can be a direct competitive effect. And that's why we do volitional releases, because the point of our release timing and method is the fish don't leave until they're ready to go to the salt water. The intent there is to kind of eliminate that competition issue in the freshwater. The other school of thought was, hey, let's just undo this and make it a natural experiment. From the tribe's perspective, they weren't willing to do that. They didn't want to wait to see what happened. They felt that it was necessary to you know, have some hatchery augmentation in order to, to get the ball moving. Well, as, as far as the hatchery is concerned, we don't want a hatchery, but we have to have it to make sure that our salmon are still here. And if we lose our fish, we lose our tradition, we lose our treaty, we lose our sovereignty. There's so much, so much at stake. So it's very important that when, as you grow up, that you help keep these runs going and you fight for the fish because they can't talk. We have to talk for them. 
And we're all anxious to get back into the river because it's part of what we do. It's part of our tradition, our soul. Certainly, I think the hatchery helps with that. If we had to wait for it to happen naturally, my son may not be able to fish. If you don't have meaningful harvest, you haven't achieved the goal. If you continue to you know, augment the population with hatchery fish, you haven't achieved the goal. The idea is to use hatcheries for a short period of time, and then eventually wean ourselves off that production and go back to, to a natural population. Hatchery fish tend to stay near their facility. They don't, there's not a big urge to get up, which is why we actually took the adult coho and moved them. I like to call it a rewilding experiment. We're taking animals that are dominated by hatchery production and trying to get them into the historic habitats, trying to get them to use those habitats, and then trying to get them to survive in those habitats. We started taking surplus hatchery adults and moved them into the two Middle River tributaries, Indian Creek and Little River. Well, what happened is they spawned, their progeny survived, and we now have naturally producing coho almost in all areas of the Elwha. The fish are real adaptable. If you take hatchery fish, they can establish themselves and become a healthy natural origin stock. A rewilding is essentially going from that process of where we've got hatchery production to natural production. Having fish up in the, in the upper reaches is really important and, and it's really gratifying to have them up there. Just knowing they're there is a really good feeling that, hey, we're on the right track. Our tribe and our traditions, our culture will be alive. We're almost ready, the population is just about ready to be able to sustain a small fishery and a commercial will follow. We're starting to see some of those species and those runs come back up that river. And even more, you know, outside of the river, we have dungeon nest crab, we have some of the clams, and so, some of the other resources that used to be in our basin out there. So those are some of the gratifying things, is, is the things that we sacrifice for, but yet we know in return that they'll come home. Once the river opens to fishing, it's going to be very beneficial. To see uh, those days when those rivers are clean, as well as the ocean, those are things that I want to see in the future for my, my grandkids and great-grandkids and so forth. The tribes are leading the way and making improvements. Tribal, non-tribal, commercial, sport fishers, killer whales, everything that benefits from salmon benefits from what the tribes are doing. Positive indicators that we've seen already just makes me super optimistic. I'm 64 years old and I believe in a couple of years I can be back down at the mouth of the Elwha River catching coal. And I look forward to that day.